Yeah, good day, YouTubers. Uh, Spanner Man again here with another video. Hope you enjoy the video today. Please subscribe to the channel. Any comments, thumbs up. Thanks for watching. Bye for now. Yeah, good day, YouTubers. Uh, Spanner Man again here with a uh, another update on uh, Raker uh, depth gauges and using a digital uh, angle gauge so first of all we did a video where that we used a digital vernier and using the depth gauge we would bring it down on the tooth zero it and then move it over to the raker and you would have a measurement of the raker uh, depth so that works very good and eliminates all human error because if you're holding uh, by hand and trying to do it you can make a lot of mistakes and errors so that really works good, really happy with it. The other thing is that when we're using a digital angle gauge to measure attack angle, now for those that are not too familiar, attack angle is the angle from this point to that point. And in hardwood, a good attack angle is between five and seven. A good attack angle in softwood is from seven to nine. So most people never measure attack angles. Uh, the attack angle is created using a depth gauge. The still FL1 to FL5 range offers progressive depth gauge with good attack angles built in. The typical constant flat gauge, while it will give a reasonable attack angle uh, when the chain is brand new, as the chain wears down, especially down to end of life, you're going to get a really poor attack angle, probably anywhere from three to three and a half maximum. Brand new chain will have an attack angle anywhere from, say, high four uh, degrees to, say, five degree uh, attack angle. So, yeah, attack angles are a very interested, uh, interesting subject. Everything has an attack angle when we refer to woodwork or metalwork. If you hold a chisel... At this angle, this is called an attack angle or that angle. So all different angles penetrate the wood uh, at different forces required. So if you have a very aggressive attack angle, you may need a much more powerful chainsaw. But bear in mind, as I said before, an attack angle of uh, brand new of around five degrees is fairly normal. It's only that if we go up a little bit higher around the 6 or 6.5 it's getting into a nice aggressive uh, attack angle there and if you've got a powerful saw you'll have no trouble uh, on that angle so problems measuring an attack angle is you've got such a small little link uh, that that's the problem that you've got there so if we actually have a look here it's such a s small distance between this point here and this point there and you can get movement very very easy to move and and the other problem that you've got that when you place the digital gauge on top it's magnetic the chain moves with it oh, all sort look sticks to it all sorts of problems so you can have a lot of error and i always knew that and it was a matter of doing about seven uh, measurements and disregard the highest and disregard the lowest so Always found out if you put a little bit of weight on the chain and had the chain fairly tight, that helped a lot. But it still didn't eliminate this uh, rocking motion because when you have a look at a tooth, especially an old war one, worn one, the heel and the toe be can come worn a little bit and this edge on here sometimes is not as flat as it should be or this uh, right side could be a thou or two difference. Uh, in height than this side or vice versa so where on a old chain like this this is this has come to the end of its life it's only got three millimeters of tooth left when we measured uh, using the digital vernier we had a raker depth uh, of 1.35 millimeters on the hard setting on the uh, fl4 gauge so which is the hard setting here and on the soft setting we had a raker uh, depth uh, of 1.5 millimeters so 
what that essentially means is that when we say 1.35 millimetres, that just means that the actual raker is 1.35 millimetres below the highest point on the tooth. So every time that we refer to a setting, that's what we're referring to. The, the raker is sitting below the, the highest point on the tooth, and that's usually the working corner. So I knew that this was a problem, and I don't use this apparatus much, right? It's not something, I'm not out there using attack angles and measuring them or, or using the digital vernier and constantly measuring depth gauges. What I built this for or modified this unit for was if I get a new gauge, I thought I'd be just interested to find out you know, what the depth of uh, that this creates or what angle uh, this creates. And that's the only reason I didn't. It didn't take long to make this up out of a bit of sheet metal. And it certainly didn't take that long to make this up and weld uh, this little part up. It only took me about 15 minutes. So there wasn't much work in it. And it's my hobby. And then the other problem was... With this movement here being very sensitive, and I said about putting a weight to try and hold it straight, you can do that. You can pull this tight this way, but it still doesn't stop movement. So I really needed to eliminate movement. So what I did was come up with this little piece of metal, bent at a right angle, and put a spring on it so that it could apply a load to the center of the tooth. Eliminating most of any type movement there at all. Like, I can't really feel any movement. It feels pretty bloody good. So I'm pretty happy with that. So now, to check the angle, we will zero this. And what we will do is place the angle gauge on top of the tooth and lower the right side of the gauge down on top of the raker until we get the right angle. So we've got to do that nice and gentle and you've got to make sure that you do that right and you should be able to produce fairly consistent results. So we'll give that a go. So it's just a matter, I'll just put that on there first, but now I'll lift this back up. I just want to check that again. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, so 6.7, 6.8, 6.7, Six point six, six point seven, six point six. You can see that's pretty consistent. Six point nine, six point eight, six point seven, six point five, six point seven. So if if you lift it up and then let it rest back down on the raker, that's what you get. As you can see, you could do that forever and you're gonna get a fairly consistent result. Because of this puts load downward force on the tooth and stops it from rocking and as i said we only ever use this setup if i've got a new raker gauge and i compared this still to the husqvarna and the husqvarna don't come anywhere near the six uh, degrees for attack angle it's it's more like round even you know very very low fives so uh the still is much more aggressive, and that's the reason I buy all the still gauges. Plus, they're hardened to 62 Rockwell, which makes them harder than all the other gauges. So, typically, that's a Husqvarna type dual combination type gauge, hard and soft setting, but yeah, uh, not as hard a metal. And as I said before, if you keep using this. To the end of the life you're going to be lucky if you've got three and a, three degrees or 3.5 degrees attack angle by the time you get down to the end of the life so it's not going to cut that good really anyway there's some people that turn around and say oh mate you're going over the top you're you're doing too much and no i said no nah, it's a hobby of mine you know i'm just didn't take me long to this this unit here that that is used to file the chain i brought that then I just modified this plate here. I just made a bit of a plate up out of stainless steel. It didn't take long, and it didn't take long to make the uh, uh, raker depth gauge using the vernier. Uh, it really didn't take that long at all, so it really wasn't yeah, much effort at all to do it. And as I said, I don't use it this often. It's just every now and then if I get a new raker gauge and I want to check uh, the depth that it files at, 
uh, if it's progressive during brand new, midway and end of life, and then also checking the uh, attack angle through the various stages of the life of the tooth, being brand new, midway and end of life. So that's what I use it for occasionally. And now that I've modified it, it works a lot better. As you saw, the results on there were much, much better. But there's people that even take this uh, to the next level, even you know, much more than what I do. And you can get this software. It's called Raker Gauge Calculator, and it's made by a guy, I don't know, he's, he goes by the name of Haynes, H-A-N-N-E-S. And I found the software on the Arborist group. So there was an Arborist group out there. So if you do a search for Raker Gauge Calculator, you'll find you'll find a link to it, uh, to that website, but you'll have to uh, be a member. So it's just a matter of signing in. So it's Raker Gauge Calculator V1.0 by Haynes, H-A-N-N-E-S. Now, the Raker Gauge Calculator, what it does is allow you to make a more aggressive angle. So here we've got a listing of 6.3, 6.5, 6.6 for different, uh, to make a different uh, Raker Gauge. And here are the two different gauges, Gauge 1 and Gauge 2. So the calculator, you'll put all different dimensions in, and it's in mil. Now, for those that are not too familiar with mil, and I've never ever used mil before, it's just another word for thou. So you look here and just say they're saying it's got 11.8 uh, uh, degrees cutter angle. And over here, it's got cutter raker distance, A. So if you go to A, cutter raker distance, that's the distance from the tip of the tooth to the uh, tip of the raker. So that's the cutter raker distance. You would put that in there. You would measure it. You'd probably need a digital vernier to do that. It's got 227, which is 227 thou. So then you've got to try and calculate that in millimetres or, or just stick with thou if you want to. Then you've got cutter height. So you would put that in there. That's 246 thou. Then you've got uh, raker depth. So you would measure uh, the raker depth. That's called C. That's this measurement here. And then we've got uh, the gauge thickness. If you make, if you want to make the the gauge out of say half a millimeter, that's uh, forty-seven thou thickness of metal. So you you put all this information in based on these dimensions here, whether you want gauge one or two, and then what you do is it'll come up. This is what gauge one looks like. This is what gauge two looks like. And you've got like a bit of a hints page here that sort of shows you what to do. So because we've got this information here and this information here, it allows you to enter everything in and will give you uh, the dimensions of what you need to make your own raker gauges based on the attack angle. So you can have a different uh, attack angles there. So I've made my own rakers before. I didn't really use software. I just sort of looked at it and said, oh, I want this a couple of percent more aggressive. So I just sort of went half a mil. So typically I made my own, made five of them for all the different ones there. They're only made out of stainless steel, but they're not meant to file over the top because you need, you know, something fairly hard. So they're only meant for checking purposes. So look, I hope that helps. If though anyone that's sort of interested in Raker Gauge Calculator, uh, yeah, Google it and you'll find a link to it like me. I haven't, I'm still playing around with it, so we'll see what happens in the future, how good this works. Uh, whether there's a new version that's going to come out. I sent the guy an email about a few things that I was sort of thinking about, so we'll see what happens there. And, yeah, anyway, thanks for watching. Give us a thumbs up. I hope uh, this uh, information helps some people out there. Bye for now.